is Phoenix's Moon and welcome to Romania's vlog episode 5 also known as the one year anniversary and Halloween special um, wasn't originally going to be t one entire um, vlog but um, with lack of questions and time I kind of had to meld them all together so Hope you guys enjoy and happy Halloween! Hello and welcome to Romania's vlog. Oh, my god, come on. I am starting to get really annoyed at this. Let's just keep going. Yeah, I say we just keep going. Right, so this is the one year and Halloween special for Romania's vlog. Aren't you guys excited? Oh, I know, I am. Yeah, okay, let's just pretend you guys didn't see that. My camera's stuffing up, but whatever. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to read out the questions that you guys gave me and I'm going to answer them to the best of my abilities. Um, then after that we'll be going to the scary story section which is basically the Halloween section of this vlog and I hope you guys are ready for your scary story um, because I shall be reading and perhaps putting a Romanian twist, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, on it. So, let us begin with the questions. Number one, how did you meet England and Norway and made the Magic Club? Hmm, right, well, England and Norway, I kind of met through conferences, as you would, especially with the UN now and et cetera, et cetera. Um, the Magic Club was kind of started because of Gakuken, um, the school. Um, I wasn't actually supposed to be in it. They kind of didn't want me in it, but I got in it anyway because I kind of told England that I was still his tea. Yeah, England didn't really like me that much for a little while, but then he sort of got over it after he realized that I didn't steal his tea anyway. And yeah okay number two hey Romania how is your relationship with Bulgaria at the moment my relationship is perfect thank you we kind of can't really see each other at the moment because we've been really really busy um but in the next couple of weeks or so we have a break when I was planning on taking him out for a picnic I don't know to eat picnic and things um Question number three. Dear Romania, what country has better tasting blood? Um, I don't know how to put this to you guys, but I'm not a vampire. Okay, if I was a vampire, I'd probably say Bulgaria, but that's just my, that's just my thoughts. Um, yeah, I'm not a vampire, people. Stop asking me vampire questions. <sighs> Question number four. Romania, how is your relationship with Hungary? Um, it's mutual and it will sh it shall stay mutual. Question number five. How many times has Hungary hit you with a frying pan? I've lost count. Have you ever asked her to make a sandwich for you? Um, yes, and we shall never go into that again ever. There are things happen that really should not happen. Like painful things that I never knew she was capable of. Um, and if there are any other times she's hit you with a frying pan, please state how many times and for what other reason. As with the first part of the question, I've lost count. Um, and I usually don't remember what I got hit for anyway. She usually just hits me randomly. I walk past her and she hits me and it's just like, 
Why? I didn't do anything to you. Okay, yeah, maybe in the past I did, but I'm behaving. All right, question number six. Do people in Romania sparkle? Unless you're talking about the gypsies, no. But the gypsies do have really, really pretty dresses. I mean, like they sparkle and they spin and they make noises when they go like this. Yeah. Okay, question number seven. Would you rather read Twilight every day of the week or Fifty Shades of Grey for one day in front of everyone? Um, do I really have to answer that? I'd probably go for the Fifty Shades of Grey because, well, it'd be funny. Maybe not dressed up as me, I'd probably pretend I'm someone else. Maybe I'll pretend to be England and do that, that'd be funny. Um, since he's always going on about being a gentleman, um, and then I'll probably end up getting killed by him, but whatever. Okay, question number eight. What was your opinion of Vlad the Impaler? Ah, oh, Vlad. Right. Well, Vlad the Impaler to me, not to anyone else, because everyone else is just, they suck. Oh, and Bulgaria, like, um, as well. Me and Bulgaria. To, my opinion of him was that he was a great man. He was a hero. He was our saviour and I could go on but that will last hours um, and I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to hear me ranting about my infatuation with Vlad the Impaler and how he managed to kick Hungry's ass. Um, Alright, so that concludes the first section of Romania's vlog. I hope you guys all enjoyed it and hope that the questions were answered to your satisfaction. If they weren't, stuff it. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be... Yeah, okay. If you guys want more... If you guys want to... expand on those questions, you can. I'll answer them. Just perhaps, maybe, a little bit sarcastically. If it's to do with either Hungary or those books that you guys keep trying to make me read. I am not a vampire, people. I do not like Twilight. The idea of a vampire that sparkles, it just ruins the whole idea of vampires. It's supposed to This vlog. Today I shall be reading a scary story based in London, England called A Free Place to Sleep. I hope that you guys enjoy it as much as I am. It was 2am in London, England. Tom and Dave were wandering through the streets like two sleepwalkers. They had inquired hotel after hotel. None had vacancies. Now their footsteps echoed eerily through the empty, narrow streets of the city. I thought London didn't have any fogs anymore, Dave grumbled. During the last hour, a foggy mist had been settling over the city. It was getting difficult for them to see the hotel signs and harder yet to see the street signs. I've got to find some place to lie down, Tom moaned. I don't care where, I just can't go any further. But go on they did, straining their eyes through the fog to find a place to stay. They walked from Piccadilly Circus to Green Park. Then they headed north to Oxford Street. As they were walking down the street lines with old four-story buildings, they saw a sign. It was hanging on the black iron fence in front of the building. For sale, it read. Listen. I've got an idea, Tom said. This place is probably vacant. What do you say we break in here and sleep for the night? I'm ready to try anything, Dave answered. The two climbed over the fence carefully, putting their feet on the iron crossbars and then leaping over the spiked points. It was tricky to do as they were tired. 
Once over the fence, they tiptoed over to the front of the building. Through one of the windows, they could see rooms that were being remodeled. It's empty, just as I thought, Tom whispered. Yeah, but how are we going to get in? Dave inquired. Tom reached into his pockets and pulled out a Swiss army knife. He wedged the knife between the top and bottom window and turned the old brass lock. Then he pushed the bottom section open. Tom and Dave with a Tom looked at Dave with a smug look of satisfaction. The two boys ho hoisted themselves up onto the window ledge and then climbed into the room. I don't want to sleep here, Dave said, looking around the room. Too many nails and tools lying around. Okay, we'll check out the other rooms, Tom said. They went into the hallway of the old house. The cramped stairs twisted up like the stairs of an old Amsterdam canal house. They traveled up to the second floor. They tried the doors on all the rooms. Everything was bolted. They climbed up to the third floor. Again, all the rooms were bolted shut. Looks like there is more than one floor, Tom said, looking up at the staircase. Let's go. They trudged up the final flight of stairs wearily. Dave was starting to complain about being tired again. On the top landing, there was only one door. The roof slanted steeply on all sides. Tom tried the doorknob. To his relief, it opened. In the room, there were two single beds and a dresser. A window overlooked the street below. Not bad, Tom said. He walked over to a stand and lit the candle that stood on it. Dave fell down on one of the old beds in exhaustion. Just then, a loud bang echoed up the staircase from below them. Dave jumped up. What was that? Tom crept out into the hallway and stood there for a minute. When he came back into the room, I think it was just the window that came in. It fell shut. We forgot to close it, didn't we? Oh yeah, Dave said, sitting down on one of the beds again. This place gives me the creeps, though. Come on, it's a free place to sleep, isn't it? Tom said. They both lay down on the beds. Tom lit a cigarette and reached to blow out, blow out the candle. As the light was extinguished, a weird cackle, almost like a laugh, seemed to come from the ceiling. Was that you, Tom? asked Dave, sitting up in his bed. No, I think it was just something on the roof. Maybe we should get out of here, don't you think? Tom leaned back down in his bed. And go where? They were both quiet for a while. I mean, maybe this place is haunted or something, Dave said in the darkness. Be quiet and go to sleep. Dave stopped talking, but then something else broke the silence. It was the sound of feet moving up and down the staircase, but the feet were moving faster than any human feet could. The footsteps seemed to slide, to slither, to glide up and down the stairs. I want to get out of here, Dave insisted in a panicked voice. Okay, let's go. Jump Tom jumped out of the bed and lit the candle. Just then, doors started slamming downstairs. The doors had been locked before, and that weird cackle came again, this time from the hallway. I'm afraid to go out there now, Dave said to Tom. He looked scared. Yeah, maybe we better stay in here. Tom walked over to the door. There was an iron bolt on it. He slid the bolt across the door frame. Nobody's going to get in through here. Tom went back and sat down on his bed. He tried to avoid Dave's eye. He could tell that Dave was freaking out. He didn't feel so brave himself. Listen, we're okay, he said. There was a rattling sound from the door. The two boys' eyes were fixed on the doorknob. It was moving backwards and forwards. No, 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 Dave was shaking with fright on his bed. At least the bolt is here, is there, Tom said to himself. But then, by its own will, it seemed that the bolt slid back from the door frame. The two boys watched in horror as the door slowly, ever so slowly, moved open. After a few inches, it stopped. Then dead silence. Then the cackle. 
The weird, sick cackle penetrated the room, and through the narrow opening in the door, the shapeless green blob began to ooze. Dave was frozen. Tom jumped up and stood in, in a corner. More of the blood blob oozed in. It was like slimy green jelly and had smell of evil. Then, suddenly, a head appeared out of the green ooze. The head had a horrible face, face covered with knife wounds. The cackle came from the face. Then, as suddenly as it appeared, the head disappeared into the green blob. On the bed, Dave was making choking sounds in his throat. He was trying to scream but couldn't. The blob oozed through the air towards him. It seemed drawn on by his fear. Standing in the corner, Tom saw his chance to escape. He moved slowly against the wall until he was near the door. Then he ran for it. As he passed near the blob, he felt something cold and slimy swish along his arm. He turned back to see Dave's face staring at him. It had the look of death in it. Tom ran harder. He almost ran, fell down the steps to the front room. The window was there. The window they had climbed in was still open. He jumped out of it and then hurdled himself across the spiked fence. On the street, he looked up at the attic room. He couldn't see anything, but the weird cackle followed him down. Tom didn't know what to do. He ran out into the foggy street. He stopped for a moment. Then behind him, he heard Dave scream in agony. Tom started running again. He ran until he came to St. James Park. Then, he kept running and running. London, 21 June. Early this morning, police found the body of 18-year-old Dave Moore impaled on the spiked fence in front of 50 Berkeley Square. The fourth story window of the house was gaping open. Homicide detectives believe the young American was pushed from the small attic room. His travelling companion, 18-year-old Todd Dodd, is being sought for questioning. Suicide was ruled out because the victim's body showed signs of a struggle. Although 50 Berkeley Square has long been known as Haunted House, the Homicide Squad told reporters that Scotland Yard believes in no ghosts. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope that you are freaked out thoroughly by this story. But it's not really that scary. I have yet to find a terrifying story that will even send the strongest person, aka Russia, well, he's not the strongest, but in terms of creeping people out, he is. Hopefully, I can find one that can scare him. Who knows? I hope that you guys have enjoyed Romania's one year and Halloween special vlog and I hope that you guys have a wonderful and scary Halloween.